Today's notes, we're going to focus more on your special right triangle. So your 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90. But first, I want to show you a way. So if you look at the top of your page, it says here's how to set up so you can avoid taking the positive and negative root in the Pythagorean theorem. So depending on, okay, and you can kind of... Um, as you do some of the assessments, if you discover that you're losing points for not writing the plus and minus and rejecting the negative, then you might want to write it this way, but you don't have to. You can always take the square root showing both uh, the positive and negative solution, but if you forgot to do that, you can do it this way, okay? So notice they're all starting with C, A, or B. A and B are both your legs, okay? So for each leg, the setup's going to be the same. Pythagorean theorem is leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So right here in the Pythagorean theorem, if I wanted to isolate C, right now it's being squared, how would we solve for C? Square root. So if you want to find C without having to take the square root at the end, the hypotenuse is always equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. So C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. Now, if you wanted to solve for either A or B, you would first say I'm solving for A, I would subtract the B squared from both sides. Then we would take the square root. So A is equal to, which is just one of your legs, the square root of your hypotenuse squared minus the other leg squared, which is going to be the same for the other leg. So it's C squared minus a squared. If you set it up that way, you don't have to show your plus and minus. So let's look at the first question. The first two, we're only going to apply or use Pythagorean theorem. If you have the triples memorized, we'll use the triples. So in question number one, we have to find the value of A. And A represents the length of this side. It tells us that the value of A is going to be given in simplest radical form. So I have to simplify a radical. I want you to pause, take a moment to discuss or think about how we're going to find the value of A. So to start with this question, we want to look at this triangle here. We do have two triangles within this picture as this is a linear pair. So if the one angle is 90, the other angle must also be 90. So we're going to start with the pink tri uh, triangle to find the missing side here, which we have a Pythagorean triple. So this missing side is 9 for the 9, 12, 15 Pythagorean triple. 15 minus the 9 is 6. So therefore, I only need to do Pythagorean theorem once. So now I have, now to find the hypotenuse, let's set it up, not a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's actually practice um, the method above to avoid that. So A, the hypotenuse, is always equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of your legs. So we have 36 and 144, which is? 180. When I look for the largest perfect square factor of 180, it is 36. 36 times 5. So final answer is going to be 6 radical 5. Again, in knowing the triple, we avoided doing the Pythagorean theorem twice. We only had to do it the one time. Looking at number 2. In number two, we have to find the value of x and y. Give your answer in simplest radical form when necessary. So again, we have a linear pair here. And since that angle is 90, this angle is also 90 as our supplementary. And we're going to focus on one of the right triangles first. And given in this right triangle that I have two sides, I can easily find the third. So you want to start by finding x. And the question you want to ask yourself first is, is it a Pythagorean triple? It is. It's the 5, 12, 13. So x is 12. That was easy. Now y, I'm looking at 8, 12, y in order 
of smallest to largest with the legs to the hypotenuse. 8, 12, y. Is that a triple? No. So we have to do Pythagorean theorem. So the hypotenuse equals the square root of the sum of the legs squared. So 12 squared plus 8 squared. y equals the square root of. We've got 144 plus 64 which is 208. Largest perfect square that goes into 208. Can anyone tell me what that is? So largest perfect square factor of 208 is 16. It's 16 times 13. So final answer is going to be 4 radical 13. Now with our special rate triangles. So if you go back to the warm up we did. You had the two triangles, the one right triangle, so I'm going to write it in, was 3, 3, 3 radical 2. Remember, since it's isosceles, or you have these two congruent angles, you will have the two congruent sides. So it's always the case that the hypotenuse is leg radical 2. Whatever the leg is, and then a radical 2. Now the leg Okay, if this is in terms of a radical, it's simply the number that's in front of a radical. But if it's not, it's equal to um, half the hypotenuse, radical 2. So if the radical 2 is not in the hypotenuse, okay, it's going to be the, in the measure of one of your legs. But I want you to actually write this down, or more or less a check for this. If I do half the hypotenuse radical 2, I'm going to show you that you do actually get 3. So half of the hypotenuse, which is 3 radical 2 times radical 2, what's half of 3? 1.5. And then what's radical 2 times radical 2? Square root of 4, which is? 2. So this is really 1.5 times 2, which is 3. It checks. It's hard to see when it's in this form, but when the hypotenuse, for instance, is a whole number, you just take that number, divide it by 2, and then put a radical attached. So let's actually go to the back. We'll do this. We'll go over the relationship of the 45, 45, 90. We'll do the examples that go with that. So that's example number three. They're all 45, 45, 90 triangles. So they're all isosceles. So if that's x, this is x. So I know it didn't ask, but if this is 22, this side's going to be 22. And the hypotenuse is going to be leg radical 2. So on, we'll put it on the front, so the hypotenuse equals, and the back, leg radical 2. So the hypotenuse of x equals 22 radical 2. It's always whatever the leg is, radical 2. In the next one, if the hypotenuse is given in terms of a radical 2, the leg is simply the number in front of the radical. So each leg is going to be 25. Okay, now the other relationship is, if you're trying to find a leg, there's no point in doing here leg equals one half the hypotenuse radical 2 because we know it's always just whatever number is in front of the radical. But when you're not given the hypotenuse in terms of a radical, x equals half the hypotenuse radical 2. What's half of 10 radical 2? Half of 10 is 5. Keep the radical 2. Now, you can, as I mentioned going over the warm-up, you can always do Pythagorean theorem. So if you want to write down um, the Pythagorean theorem, you can, but I just want to show you, you still get the same answer. So x squared plus x squared equals 10 squared. 2x squared equals 100 divided by 2. x squared is 50. Take the square root showing the plus and minus, rejecting the negative, 
We have 25 times 2 gives me 50, which gives us the 5 radical 2. So don't ever panic on an assessment if you forget the relationship for the isosceles right triangle because you can always use Pythagorean theorem. Okay? It's just shorter if you can memorize the relationships. Now to the 30, 60, 90. Now, when it comes to the 30, 60, 90, notice I'm calling the legs shorter and longer because the angles, the acute angles are different sizes now. So since the, in a 45, 45, 90 the same, the legs are going to be the same. Because your angles are going to be different, your legs are going to be different. So opposite the 60, you don't have to write this down, but this is the longer leg and this is going to be the shorter leg. And we obviously have the hypotenuse. Okay? Now, the relationship is, if you go back to what was on your warm-up, if you look at that example, in the warm-up, I don't have much room. Here was the 60. I don't know if it looked like this. What was your hypotenuse? It was 8, right? And then the shorter leg was 4, and then we had 4 radical 3. That will always be the case. That shorter leg right here, so opposite the 30 is the shorter leg 4, that will always be half the hypotenuse. So your hypotenuse is double the shorter leg. So if I call the shorter leg x, the hypotenuse would be 2x. Okay? Now, when it comes to the shorter leg and longer leg, the shorter leg, we can say, is half the hypotenuse. You can go backwards. You double the shorter leg to get the hypotenuse, so the shorter leg is half the hypotenuse. Now, the longer leg, see how you have the 4 here and that's 4 radical 3? That will always be the case. The leg opposite the 60 degree angle is half the hypotenuse. So you always take half the hypotenuse, but then you put a radical 3 after it. Okay, so you can also write this as whatever the shorter leg is, radical 3. So while some are still writing, if you're done, flip it over to the back and see if you can fill in some of those triangles in example number 4. Well, let's add 2 if you haven't yet. It's x radical 3. So if we write that on the back to start just as a refresher, so here's 60, 30, 90. Again, it's x, x radical 3, 2x is the relationship. So if you're given the hypotenuse, that's one of the questions that we like. Because if you're given 18, you take half of 18 for the other two sides. So half of 18, so here's 2x, here's the 1x, 1x. So half of 18 is 9. So that's the shorter leg. The shorter leg is always half the hypotenuse. And then opposite the 60 has got to be larger is the 9 radical 3. We're also given the hypotenuse and the one to the right, but it's in terms of a radical. What's half? So we first take half of the hypotenuse. What's half of 24 radical 3? 12 radical 3. Now, the other one, as we saw over here, whatever this number is, the longer leg is that number plus a radical 3. So y equals... 12 radical 3, radical 3. So we're multiplying radicals. So what is, you can only multiply a radical times a radical. What's radical 3 times radical 3? What's that? 3. 
or you can say square root of 9. So if you're not at that point yet to just write 3, write the square root of 9, then take the square root. And 12 times 3 is 36. So y is equal to 36. And the last one for our special rate triangles, we're given the longer leg. Longer leg is 12, and for me, I always find the shorter leg based on the longer leg because it's easy to double whatever that is to find the hypotenuse. So I always write out the relationship. The shorter leg times radical 3 equals the longer leg. As you can see up here, Here's the shorter leg, which is 9. So this is shorter leg radical 3 to get 9 radical 3. So if this is 12, I would substitute the 12 for the longer leg. The shorter leg is the x, and then I just have to solve for x. So I set up an equation. If x is being multiplied by radical 3, I would perform the inverse to solve for x, which is to divide by radical 3. Cancel, so x equals 12 divided by radical 3. Can't simplify that fraction. However, I'm going to teach you something new with radicals, which you'll use a lot next year in Algebra 2, is that you also, in math, can't leave your answer with a radical in the denominator because it's irrational. Every fraction has to have a rational denominator. So the process, okay, is called rationalizing the denominator, and that's what we're going to do. And we're going to utilize this principle. To turn radical 3 into a number that's not irrational, we're simply multiplied by itself. Okay? So, however, in a fraction, so if I multiply the bottom by radical 3, radical 3 times radical 3 is 3. That's good. That's what I want to happen. I don't want it to be irrational. However, I don't want to change the value of it. I want to keep it equivalent. So I really need to multiply by 1. So what would have to go in the denominator to multiply by 1? Up here in the numerator would be what? So in the numerator would have to be radical 3. So this becomes 12 radical 3 over 3, which you can divide 12 by 3 or do 12 thirds. So the final answer would be 4 radical 3. So we just learned how to rationalize the denominator. And that was the value of just x. We still have to find y. Well, y is just double this. So if x is 4 radical 3, to find the hypotenuse, I double 4 radical 3, which would be 8 radical 3. 4 times 2 is 8. All right, moving on to number 5. Find the perimeter of an equilateral triangle whose altitude or height is 6 radical 3. So let's draw an equilateral triangle. Altitude is 6 radical 3 centimeters. Now all sides are the same length. Not only are all sides the same length, but what's true about every angle? It's the same measure. So what is the measure of each angle? 60. So this angle here is 60. This angle here is 60. But what's happening to this 60 degree angle up top? The altitude is also in an equilateral triangle. The altitude is also an angle bisector and median. Yep. So therefore, this is bisected, so 60 divided by 2 would be 30. So if you ever have an equilateral triangle in which you draw the altitude, you're going to have two 30, 60, 90 right triangles. As we said, it bisected the base, so this is equal to that. So if you wanted to remove one of the right triangles, because that's where you need to focus. If you wanted to remove one of the right triangles, the 6 radical 3 would be here. The 90's here. Here's the 60. Here's the 30. And it's really great 
when opposite the 60 is in terms of radical 3. Because that means the shorter leg is just whatever number comes in front. And the hypotenuse is double that, which is 12. So each side is 12. Each of these are 6, which makes the whole side 12. Perimeter, I just add up all three sides, or since they're all the same, perimeter is going to be 3 times 12, which is 36 centimeters. Now we're coming back to the area of a regular polygon. In this case, we have a hexagon, so we're going to have six sides. When we have the hexagon, remember this segment that goes from, or any polygon, the segment that goes from the center to a side is the apothem. So our apothem equals 18 inches just for vocab. Now since we can't remember the formula, but we do, re oh wait, we do have someone that remembers. The area formula for a regular polygon is what? I won't, I won't say your name over the mic in case you get it wrong. Perimeter times the apothem. You're missing one thing. No? Times, Brian? No? A half. One half perimeter times apothem because what you're essentially doing is, so here's the, here's, we'll call X a side, right? We'll call X a side. So area of this triangle is one half X times the height. I could have called it base. But then we're going to multiply by 6, right? Because there's 6 triangles. And if you do 6 times x, which is a side, 6 times s is the perimeter. And the height of this triangle is the apothem, so that's where 1 half perimeter times area comes into play. So we have the a. We have the apothem. So we have 1 half of, we need the perimeter, times 18. We've got that so far. Now the perimeter, I need to find the length of one of the sides. Okay? So I'm just going to draw this triangle down here. Nice and large. So the apothem, it does have the right angle because it's perpendicular. So 18 inches. I need to find this whole side X. Do you remember what was true about these two sides. They're congruent. So we have an isosceles triangle again. We have an isosceles triangle, but I need to know at least one of the angles. And this angle right here, this whole angle, I'm going to call theta. It's the Greek letter just to represent the measure of the angle. Okay? But, Maria, do you know what it's going to be? It's going to be what? Yes, one-sixth of 360. Because there's, we said how many triangles again? Six, and there's six thetas, right? They're all the same angle. So take 360 because that makes a full circle. So 360 divided by six is 60. But if this whole angle is 60, that means each piece is going to be 30. And because of the 90, it's going to be 30, 60, 90. However, it's not necessarily the best scenario when opposite the 60 is not in terms of radical 3. So what I need to find is opposite the 30, this side here, so I can double it for this side because they're the same. So the shorter leg, I'm going to do SL, the shorter leg is always longer leg radical 3. So the shorter leg, let's call this um, y. So y equals the longer leg. No, I did something wrong. I did something wrong. It's the longer leg equals shorter leg radical 3. Longer leg equals shorter leg radical 3. Because so I knew that wasn't the case. So longer leg is 18. Shorter leg is y. And we have to do the same thing that we did on the page before at the bottom. Divide by radical 3, those cancel, and y equals 18 over radical 3, 
but we have to rationalize the denominator because the square root of 3 is irrational. So multiply it by radical 3 over radical 3, we get 18 radical 3 over 3. I want you to think about something here. This is always going to be a 3. So I take a third, or divided by 3, we get 6 radical 3. Going back to the other one, on this page here at the bottom, when this was, this question here, when this was 12, the shorter leg was a third of that radical 3. Because we had to multiply by radical 3 over radical 3, or end up dividing by radical 3 at the end. So the shorter leg, if you want to write this down, if you can memorize this, There we go. The shorter leg is always a third of the longer leg radical 3. Because you're going to end up having to rationalize it. Right? Times radical 3 over radical 3. And then you're going to end up dividing by 3. So if this is the... If this is now 6 radical 3, that means this is 6 radical 3. What's the whole bottom? 12 radical 3. So the perimeter, P, we're using the formula. We're running out of room here. Perimeter equals 6 times 12 radical 3 because it's a hexagon, which is 72 radical 3. So half of 18 is 9. On the calculator, what's 9 times 72 radical 3? It is 1122.368923. We have to round to the nearest tenth. So here, so the area is approximately 1122.4. We are inches squared. Eleven twenty-two point four.